Before you can create a healthy relationship with others, you first have to create a healthy relationship with yourself. Welcome to Let's Talk About It with your host, Dr. Janie Lacey. Janie is a nationally respected psychotherapist, and on this show, she and her featured guests will help you discover and break patterns in your life that can contribute to self-sabotage and unhealthy relationships. Now, here is Dr. Janie Lacey. Accept the things to which fate binds you and love the people with whom fate brings you together, but do so with all your heart. Marcus Aurelius, the emperor and philosopher of Rome, which is the opening quote to our featured guest book, All the Way, a story of love, loss, and repurpose. Tom Kidd, the founder of the Joan L. Kidd MD Fight for Life Continuum, a project designed to deliver quality control oversight on plan of care and inform the patient caregiver of all options on health care for the sole purpose of extending the lives of terminal cancer patients with maintaining the quality of life acceptable to the patient. The founding of the continuum was inspired by his love of his life and the apple of his eye, his wife, Dr. Joan Kidd, and their journey to fight for her life. Since the founding, the Continuum resources have been used by over 16,000 cancer patients, caregivers, and their families at no charge, and is truly a love offering. As this kind soul thought it not robbery to pay it forward to honor his beloved. And to top it off, today's guest is such a kind person who has a philanthropic heart. He is also the founder of the Joan L. Kidd MD, Fight for Life concert series, which, are red which is a red tie affair, a musical fundraising concert gala for cancer nonprofits and cancer support groups. Tom, I'm honored for you to join the show today and to share with viewers and our listeners watching and listening a glimpse of your love story. You know, Tom, you have shared the beautiful journey of finding love and what love looks like in action. So you have to kick us off by sharing with us your thoughts on the keys to having a deep and meaningful relationship. Well, thank you very much, uh, Janie, for having me on uh, your show. You know, I've been listening to all your shows. Uh, they've just been great. So I, I, I hope I can uphold my end of the bargain here and be a great guest for you. Uh, you've had some phenomenal people on. Thank you. Um, a little bit of a background to uh, what I did in the book, and then I can get to your question. Uh, I decided um, that after my wife, um, who was a well-respected physician in Orlando, after she got cancer and um, we battled it and she ended up passing away, I wanted to, to put down on a piece of paper, and it ended up being a book, our story together because I wanted to remember it. And then as I wrote the book, I said, you know, there's a lot of things in here. Maybe other people would like to read our story, not from a standpoint of uh, a commercial enterprise. I wasn't interested in making money on the book. Like you see everybody these days kind of selling books. That's nothing wrong with that. It just wasn't my cup of tea for this particular story. What I wanted to do was to memorialize what, a, uh, what I considered to be that once in a lifetime type of relationship that I think men and women both are always looking for. Um, and I didn't want it to just pass away and not anybody have the benefit of seeing kind of what we had together. And maybe they could get something out of it. So with that said, um, I think there are, and by the way, I'm not the psychoanalyst here. You are, Doc. So I'm not going to pretend to uh, to know all those particular answers. I'm sure you know a lot more about this than I do. All I can do is relate to what my experience was, my personal experience. And it might resonate with your listeners or viewers uh, on some of these things. Um, like everybody else in this world, I ended up, through my life, now that I'm getting up there in, uh, in age, um, having several relationships 
whether being married or having a girlfriend or a boyfriend, we all have um, more than one relationship typically uh, in, in, our, in our lives. And it took me until I met my wife, Joan, to really understand what a great once in a lifetime relationship really is. And she helped. She was as much as part of this process as me. It wasn't all me, it was her too. And if I could summarize it really quickly here for you, is that you got to have, I think, all of these components in order to um, have a great relationship. First of all, you got to have honesty. Everybody knows that. But what is that? Is that just when it's convenient? Or, or is that honesty about everything? No, it's about everything, the good and the bad. If you have the right partner in your life, it doesn't matter. You know, a lot of people are afraid to tell their partner, hey, something bad happened. I don't really want to tell you because you might look at me differently. You might judge me a different way or whatever. When you have a great relationship, it doesn't matter because you accept the good and the bad that comes with that person, whatever that is. Now on to acceptance. The next thing is acceptance. And you've got to accept everything that defines your partner and their life. Many people have a lifetime before you of experiences before they ever met you. So they come with those experiences. Uh, in the case of men, it might be a lady with children. Well, Joan had three children who were just coming into their late teens and, and adulthood. And I've got to tell you a quick story about this. Right after we first met, and we were having one di dinner one night, and she had this uh, kind of strange look on her face and all that. And we kind of both knew, hey, there's something here. They're, they're, we're going somewhere with this. And so she just blurts out. She says, I don't know. I don't know about, you know, my kids. And I go, what do you mean your kids? And I said, well, you know, you know, my kids are kind of here and there. And I don't know if that's going to create a problem or you're going to have a problem with me, you know, because of them or, and I go, let me, hold off, stop. When you love somebody, you accept everything about them. You don't just get to say, well, you know, I like everything about you, but your kids. Okay. I, I don't want, you know, I over there, I leave that over there. You have to accept it. And I said, I accept your kids and I'll get along fine with your kids. So what else was there? Well, maybe I shouldn't say this on the air, but I don't think she'll mind. She said, well, I'm not the greatest with money and investments. And I said, that's okay. That's my area. That's what I do. So I'll take care of that. But she had all of these insecurities and anxieties about, I wasn't going to accept because she couldn't handle money right, or, you know, she's not handle investments or something about her kids or, uh, or those kind of things. I said, no, I, let me tell you something. You do not ever have to worry about that from me. I love all of you, well, you know, however that comes. And if you don't love somebody that way, you don't really love them. That's my opinion. Mm. Again. Um, respect. And this is something that has to be earned. You can't say like, hey, do you respect me? Well, I don't know. Have you done anything for me to be able to respect you? Well, like be honest with me, keep your commitments, be, you know, trustworthy, all those kind of things. So you have to do all of these things. You have to earn that respect. But if you don't have respect in the relationship, again, there's a big hole. And we'll get to what that hole is in a minute. Dedication to their happiness and well-being. Mm -hmm. That's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. But why, what I mean by that is that you're not always thinking about what it is that you want what's good for you. And we live in this me age, you know, it started back in the eighties, you know, when everybody kind of got around this thing, Hey, what do I get out of it? You know, mm -hmm. what do I get, I don't care what you get out of it, what I get out. Of it. You can't have that kind of attitude in a relationship. Okay. So you have to, you have to be dedicated to what makes your partner happy. 
and you have to be willing to say it's okay. So you like to, you know, go on and drive through the country on Sunday. You know, I don't really like to do that. I'd rather be doing something else. But because you're dedicated to their happiness, you're going to go along with that. You're going to go with them. And you know what? You might just find out you enjoy it because it isn't being in the country, right? It isn't taking the drive. It's not being in the car. It's being together. So whatever you're doing, you're doing together. You're stepping through life together. You know, Joan was a doctor, very busy, very, very busy doctor. I was the CEO of a small public company at the time, but we were in the process of buying like 13 or 14 companies. I was working till 3 a.m. in the morning, getting up at, you know, 8 o'clock, going back to work at 9 every day. But somehow we found all of this time to have this rich relationship because we prioritized that. Okay, it was important to us. You know, you can tell you're in a bad relationship, Janie, when everything takes priority over you. Okay, if you know what I'm saying. Everything kind of comes before you. I had a, a good friend of mine one time that thought his dog was more important than his girlfriend, as an example. So the dog comes first, and now my girlfriend, well, okay, and she isn't really a girlfriend, okay. Right. Dog is your girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's great. So uh, patience. What is patience? Well, everybody kind of sort of knows what it means. To me and to her, it meant understanding your partner's point of view. Mm -hmm. Be patient. Mm -hmm. Okay, understand where you're coming from with that, your attitude. So with that patience, you also have to be interested in what they have to say to also to exactly. feel that. Yeah. <laughs> Kindness, being kind mm -hmm. all the time. You know, kind. in Joan and I's history, and I've had relationships where things get a little testy from time to time. Of you course, know? real relationship. I have to say this with all honesty myself. From the time I met Joan, until the time that she passed away, we never had a mean word. Mm. We never had a fight. You know, I know there's probably this thinking that it's okay and healthy to fight. Mm -hmm. Did we ever agree? Did we ever disagree? Yeah, we, di we disagreed, but it was like a civil disagreement mm. of which went just by like that and then we went on with the rest of our lives so we never let anything ever escalate and that was because we truly were devoted to each other okay and and all of mm -hmm. these things. yeah i was gonna say it uh, sounds like you had all those other things in place the respect the kindness the honesty the prioritization and you're my yeah. rock and i can count on you and and so forth and so on and, and i trust you and by the way, that's where trust comes from. When you have all of these things, now you have the trust. You can't have trust and then try to build these things. Um, so um, then um, I think the comfort comes into play. Mm, comfort. Yes. I'm not just talking about when she was going through cancer. I was basically her caregiver and nurse. And I was the bull in the china shop that went in and hired and fired doctors and uh, I just created all kinds of havoc in trying to get her the care that she needed. And, but I think comfort is also when you've had a bad day and, you know, you kind of break down in tears because so so, somebody hurt you or something happened mm. in your family or your partner's family. You don't quite understand what's going on. And it's just put the arms around them and say, don't worry about it, honey. It's going to be yes. okay. Everything's yes. going to be okay. So it's being that rather than, hey, what the heck are you doing all upset, you know? Exactly. You got my thing. I got people coming over tonight, you know? That, that's exactly. not reaction, mm -hmm. my reaction to her if she had a, a very difficult day, like patients almost dying in her examination rooms and her having to call 911 two or three times a day. And she'd come home all upset and in tears. I would put my arms around her and say, it's going to be all right. Don't worry about it. Instead of complaining that she was right. Right. Yeah, and that, that comfort is a good point, Tom, because, you know, it's 
what you also mentioned is you're holding space. You were holding space for her, for her to be, to show up, have her emotions, and you weren't there to try to fix it or convince her to be anything, just holding emotional space um, for her. And I think that's an excellent uh, point that people need to, to hear. When you hold space for people, you're not trying to change or fix, you're there almost um, literally I'm holding sure. them emotionally. Yeah, and it's again, it's because of all of those other things that come into play that you've made this connection on so many different levels. Yes. Um, when people talk, I hear people talk about, well, the chemistry. Well, I, you know, I, other than infatuation, I'm not sure what that means. A connection is where you're connecting with that other person in a way that they, you, you are able to talk to each other without saying any words. Mm. Able to look at each other and understand what they're thinking. You're, you're tuned in with what they're saying even when they're not saying anything. Mm, soul um, connection comes to mind, that deeper, meaningful connection. Yeah, that deep, yeah. So, and I think what's really important too is you, you, you need to, what we did is we took down the offensive walls. In other words, mm -hmm. those walls that keep intimacy out. And I don't mean intimacy, intimacy just from sex. I mean the intimacy of, of every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, goes by that you have to have this intimacy going on, it, whether it's a phone call or a text or send a flower or I'll pick up your cleaning or uh, a hug, a kiss, a look, a, you know, all those kind of things that go into being 24 hour intimacy instead mm. of um, just what goes on in the bed. Doing life together, truly doing life together is being intimate. All right. Mm -hmm. And that then delves over into that romantic side uh, of things. But first I want to talk about the take down uh, offensive walls. Mm -hmm. I use these terms because I've actually used them with her when we had a conversation. So it was take down offensive walls which are designed to wall you against uh, the relationship that feels so good it's scary. You're scared to death. Okay, I step over that threshold. This is so good. If something happens with it, I'm going to be so hurt. I can't step over that threshold. You got to take those walls down. Mm -hmm. You know, you truly haven't lived until you've taken that risk of being hurt in life because you're never going to experience what it is to get to the top of the roller coaster, if you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. I go down on the other side, but you can't be thinking about going down on the other side. Uh, I think that's really important. And then tearing down, or excuse me, build up the defensive walls. What's the defensive walls? It, it is the walls that keep external to the relationship of anything that might come in and interfere that relationship. That's people, that's events, that's places, that's times, uh, circumstances. It, it, you're totally bound to each other as one. That mm -hmm. saying of we became one has to become a fact where mm -hmm. you don't let other things come into the middle of your relationship no matter what it is. Um, and there's a point there that I want to um, emphasize, and that is that you can't do relationships with walls up. <laughs> when people are, you know, usually they're wounded or they're bringing in baggage into their relationship, they're not completely going to the, the title of your book. They're not completely all the way in. So they're, they're operating from a place of, I'm going to hold back or I'm not going to completely share myself because I don't want to get hurt. And what Tom is telling us today is you can't do that. <laughs> No, well, I mean, if you want, if you want the best that it can be, then you have to risk. You have to take the risk. So to love, and you don't want to. Love okay. is to risk. Nobody's telling you you have to, mm -hmm. but I'm here to tell you that that the 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 happiest time in my life was with Joan because I finally found someone that I had connected with on a whole kind of. And you say what? Well, uh, how did you guys ever get along? I used to have people say, Tom, she's a type A personality. You're a type A personality. Oh my gosh, how do you guys even live in the same house? You know, <laughs> much less get along. It's because we tore all of that stuff down. Mm. And we got right down to the basics of connecting as human beings. Um, so you're dispelling that myth that two alphas, two A's, they can truly be married and be happy 
because yeah. of all the elements that you're sharing with us, <laughs> including putting those walls but, down. But the defensive walls, like if I'm dealing with everything I had to deal with in the public companies, I had a lot of stress on me. She's dealing with life and death issues. Mm -hmm. You know, she's dealing with uh, um, frustrations with the uh, transferring over to electronic medical records, you know, because she never used to use the remote to the TV, much less have to try to transfer everybody's patient's records over. So it, it, those are stresses that you, we all get, all human beings get, if you're, work, if you're living at all. So we had to somehow go, wait a minute, okay, that all, those walls go up, that stuff doesn't come in to me and you, okay? And so we're, in, a, we're in, a, in our little bubble as far as our relationship was. So we protected that, so we wouldn't let anything interfere. Um, I most hear that also, Tom, is um, you're looking at the relationship kind of using your financial terms as an investment. And part of that investment um, is everything that's going into that is, is there's going to be a return by you doing certain things in that relationship. And that's having a good, respectful, loving, you know, empathetic, we're there for each other, relational dynamic, um, even though we may still have two alpha personalities out in the world. It's kind of that like defense out in the world. But when you're together, it's truly meaningful and connecting. Well, I, you know, not to, not to get too deep in the weeds of uh, the clinical aspects, but because uh, I don't know that, but it, it's not the situation where you have one partner who's like giving all this attention mm -hmm. and effect and dedication. I'll do the software like a codependency situation, and the other person doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's where both people are all in on the relationship. They both look at things the same way. I'm here to do this for you and you're doing this for me, but we're not keeping a ledger. We're not going, you did that for me last week, so now you owe me that and so forth and so on. It's not that, it's just you do it. It comes naturally and, and you're committed to do it, knowing that, well, wait a minute, I'm making myself pretty vulnerable here, okay? I'm vulnerable. Really vulnerable, very, very vulnerable. Okay. It's a big V word, vulnerability. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other point that you're making that I want to stress for our, our listeners and viewers is that you have to be 100-100. It's not 50-50. It's we're both giving the same amount of energy, the same amount of investment into the relationship. It's not, let me see what he can give me and then I'll show up. Um, yeah. You know, what sometimes women can, can get that type of advice is let him, you know, do all the chasing even after you're married um, <laughs> is that it has to be 100-100. Absolutely. You know, and I, and I think that change things have changed so much with women that it's okay for women to to take that that role and to to give that like it because quite frankly there's a lot of guys that like that they they like to have it i was challenged by her joan was tall she was five almost five eleven um blonde beautiful lady mm -hmm. smart mm -hmm. probably a lot smarter than me don't tell anybody <laughs> and if she walked into a room, she would intimidate men. And men would like, oh my gosh, I can't talk to her. She's smart, she's beautiful, she's, you know, she's all these things, right? And she used to tell me that. She said, you know, Tom, I don't know what it is. I just men, I intimidate men, I don't know what it is. I said, well, I can tell you what it is. You're a beautiful woman, smart, a doctor, you know, can I keep going on here? I mean, you know, you, you, you are going to. You are going to intimidate some men. That's the kind of woman that I like. Now, what, maybe not all men care for what Maybe the other men would care for a different kind of lady. For me, it worked perfect. And she was that kind of a personality, and I was. But instead of clashing, we went like this. Hmm. You melted. You melted and you walked together and forward. Was, was phenomenal. Instead of being a boiling pot, it was you know, nice and calm. Made a good cake. The ingredients made a good cake. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, another thing is commitment, um, Janie. M making sure that you live up to your word and keep your word to your partner. Never lie to your partner, ever, about anything. Because the first time there's a lie, as you know, then that partner is always, even they say, oh, okay, it was just a little white lie. Oh, it was just one time. Once somebody lies, you're always in the back of your head thinking, what else are they not going to be? 
yes. all this with me about? Do I always have to worry about it? The moment you start worrying about your partner that way, you're on, you're on the downside. Absolutely. Uh, One lie, then you start questioning all truths. We didn't. And that's why we, we never lied to each other about anything. Mm -hmm. Whether, you know, well, what happened there? Well, honey, here's what happened, I got to tell you. And you just tell the truth. And you tell the truth. So truth in the relationship. Um, but that's what, to me, commitment means. I'm committed to you to the extent I will bear my soul and I will embarrass myself if I need to, to be truthful with you. Mm. And always count on me that what I say, I will do. That's and also that's mature love. Yeah. Mature love is when you can speak the truth, even though you know the partner may um, be hurt by it, is that you're committed to speaking truth. Speak the truth all the time, even though it hurts, because mm -hmm. it'll pass. So now we're into intimacy and romance. The intimacy part of it was uh, I would send flowers to her every month on our wedding anniversary, every single month to our office. Mm, so sweet. With a card just saying, honey, I just wanted to let you know you're still number one. I did that every single month of our relationship when we were married. And then today, um, I even put two roses by our plaque at Lou Gardens in Orlando, where I have a plaque installed. A, a live oak tree was dedicated to her. We had a ceremony, and there's a plaque there. You know? So I still do it today. Mm -hmm. That was my way of constantly telling her sending the message that you're still number one. Now, some people would say, well, okay, that gets expensive, does it? Well, okay, don't send the plants and dozen roses and all that, send one rose, okay? It's the point of the act. I was fortunate to have the resources to be able to do a lot of things for her that many people probably couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And it's not how much you do, it's that thought of, you're letting them know. I know yes. you're at the office, but I know today is special to you and it's special to me and you're still special to me. And if yes. you're reminding them constantly of that, that's just a part of that. Um, Absolutely. Consideration, mm -hmm. caring, commitment, showing you're still there, you know. I mean, so I get the the feeling that she always wanted to make sure, hey, are you still going to be there for me? And absolutely. I would tell her and show her I will always be there for you. You know, Tom, we, um, before we get ready to take our break in a few seconds, you know, you are really sharing us some deep keys to that deep and meaningful relationship. And I also hear a lot of maturity showing people, opening up. Uh, the windows of your relationship that you and Joan had that was a beautiful relationship and all the things that made it up. So we want to continue when we come back from this uh, two minute, uh, from this quick break, our commercial break uh, with Tom Kidd, who is sharing with us the keys to having a deep and meaningful relationship because he has experienced love that was all the way. So we'll be right back. Are you often attracted to unavailable partners? Feel like you can't stay but can't leave a toxic relationship? Obsessed with thinking about a current or former lover? Feel resentful that you're always taking care of the other person? The Woman Redeemed Therapy Program is for women who want to break free from toxic relationship patterns so they can find the love they truly deserve. This program is a safe, nurturing environment, essential for building self-worth and acquiring the tools to work through challenges and create your best self. We invite you to begin the journey today to start building the new you. Call 407-622-1770 or visit LifeCounselingSolutions.com. That's LifeCounselingSolutions.com. You are listening to Let's Talk About It with Dr. Janie Lacey. To reach the show today, please call into 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. You may also send an email to Janie at lifecounselingsolutions.com. Now back to Let's Talk About It. So let's talk about it with Janie Lacey. 
we have our special guest today, Tom Kidd, the author of All The Way, and he was sharing with us the keys to having a deep and meaningful relationship from his love of his life, Joan L. Kidd. You know, Tom, you had said that um, in the book that acts of love are what counts the most, not words. Love is what it does. So please explain um, for our viewers and our listeners, what exactly does that mean? Well, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to discount the, the value of some words, but sometimes I think the phrase, I love you, is overused maybe. Uh, I will say this, every night before we went to sleep, we told each other we loved each other every single night, every single morning. That was the extent of the times that we would usually say those words. There'd be other times. But our relationship was more of the consideration that we showed each other, the things that we did that demonstrated that love. Okay, it's, uh, and I can give you one that's really close to my heart. Uh, uh, quite frankly, uh, we were uh, in Paris, um, the last trip that we took together, and we were walking down by the um, Seine, and, um, you know, she, uh, she was not feeling well, and we were getting ready to go home the next day. We had done on this whirlwind trip to Monaco, and on the yacht, and the, the Sea Dream yacht, and the Mediterranean. We went up to Scotland and played golf and we're on the French area. I mean, you know, just this fabulous trip. I know it's a little over the top, but it was special for her. Absolutely. So we're finishing in Paris and we had just been to Normandy the day before and we're walking down by the Seine and she's very quiet and she said, you know, honey, she said, I, I just wonder if anybody you know, I've had a positive effect on anybody in my life. And I said, are you crazy? Sure you have. What are you talking about? You're a great mom. You're a great wife. You're super duper doctor. I mean, and you've saved all these people's lives and you've treated these people and made their lives better and their families' lives better. And my goodness, why would you say such a thing? She didn't respond. So we're on uh, the plane flying home the next day for Orlando. And I said, hmm, it's time. I need to show her how much she's loved. So I'm going to do something right now. In 60 days, I put together a, uh, and this sounds like me bragging, so please don't take it that way. I'm just telling you about the event. I put together in 60 days with the help of several other people, I might add this big surprise party for her birthday in January. So we're flying home late October in January for her birthday. I mean, surprise party. There was 275, 280 people there. Her colleagues, people she's worked with going way back. Family flew in from out of state. Friends flew in from out of state. Patients flew in that they had moved that she had treated years before. I mean, we ran people down all over the place. And so she walks into this ballroom at Erosion Shingle Creek and everybody surprises her her birthday. Mm. Then one by one by one, not everybody, but a lot, got up and gave it through to her three or four minute speech. And she was sitting at the front table telling her how they had impacted their life how they saved her son's life, you know, wow. as a, how they, so she sat there for, I don't know, two hours and listened to all these people tell her, and then there was entertainment, and it, it was, it was an uplifting event. It wasn't a sad event. It was sure. an uplifting event. Celebration, it sounds like. And she just, when it was all over, she just looked at me and she said, I can't believe you did that. I can't, she used to say stuff like that when I would surprise her with, uh -huh. you know, she, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, those kind of acts. There was another one where it was her birthday, and this is before she was sick. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, uh, so what do you think well, you want to do for your birthday this year? And she said, I don't know, why don't we go out to Norman's? And you know Norman's is a, a upscale kind of restaurant in Orlando. Let's go to Norman's and eat. Okay, all right, man, I'll make the reservations. In the meantime, in the background, I'm making the surprise for her. So I'll try to be quick here if I can't, because I know we have limited time. So I arranged an airplane to take us, fly us up to Savannah to go to a restaurant where we had the most romantic dinner we ever had together when we first met to recreate that night. And then I invited her kids to come along with us. Mm -hmm. And for them to be at the executive airport in Orlando with the airplane, and then I was just going to tell her we're going to, I got to take a, make a quick stop here to pick up some papers that came in. And so she gets there and they're all out there, you know, happy birthday, mom, you know. <laughs> so we fly up to uh, uh, Savannah and there's a car waiting up there. And we, and we go to the dinner at the Pink House, which is, she said was her uh, most romantic dinner that she ever had when we first met. So those kinds of surprises, I was the constant surpriser. I would surprise her all the time. Absolutely. So I recreated, her, I recreated her wedding day at Iowa. Oh, at nice. And we have Jefferson Starship for our entertainment for our reception. So again, being somewhat able to because of resources. Sure, absolutely. First year anniversary, I went right back there and recreated our dinner, right down to the silverware, the setting, the food, the wedding cake and everything, right? And it was just a small group of wedding party. And there's a speakerphone in the middle of the table. And mm -hmm. I've arranged for Jefferson Starship, who was given a concert in another city. I got all of them in and said, I want you to call and wish Joan a happy birthday, if you don't mind. Did you Look at that. Exactly a year ago. So there it goes. And I say, honey, I got to <laughs> call. And they call and they're backstage at a break at a concert and they're calling her. <laughs> and then uh, at the wedding, they have a hit song called Jane. And they changed the name of the song to Joan. So they sang it to her over the speakerphone. Look at that. Hit song, Joan. I, you know, and uh, again, for your listeners and everybody out there, I don't say this. Um, again, I've been very blessed in my life to Absolutely. Uh, have been able to to do these kinds of things. But what I hear your we point. We all have the ability to do something <laughs> exactly. that thinks of the other person, okay, and surprises them. And you should have seen her eyes light up and her face light up. Oh, I bet. And she'd look at me and just go. And that was probably one of, I don't know, many, I can't even remember how many times I would try to surprise her of something that I thought would make her happy. That was the goal. Absolutely. And I think the, the point that I want to pull out for, so for she, everyone to, huh? Ahead. Go ahead. No, that's all right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say the point I want to pull out for, um, for everyone to hear is that what Tom is just sharing with us through those examples is that love is an action. It's in the doing, it's in the showing, and you don't have to necessarily um, no, if you don't have all the resources and to recreate those things, I mean, obviously, when, when you're blessed and you have the resources, do those things. But there are things that you can do right, um, right around you if you pay attention to what she likes or who she exactly is right. and the things that she connects with. And, and that's the point that I'm hearing Tom make is when you study and know your love, um, you will do the things that are most meaningful. And you had that light bulb moment traveling back from Paris where, you know what? I'm going to show her and having those people come and express and with their presence, I hear their presence was the present. <laughs> sure. Wonderful. That's correct. Well, I mean, it's just like you're talking about. I mean, how about instead of, uh, and I know relationships and marriages fall into this, okay, where you kind of start getting apart and, and every year the birthday's, oh, let's go eat down at the roadhouse, you know, and so you go down and eat at the roadhouse. Okay, mm -hmm. what are we going to do this year, honey? Let's go down to the roadhouse. How about spice it up a little bit? How about invite some friends over, you know, get some beer in the beer keg out in the back, you know, and uh, put some sausages on the grill and surprise her with a bunch of friends or right. call somebody and say, hey, why don't you guys drive down from, you know, Jacksonville and, and let's surprise her, you know? So you don't have to have some big budget to, to do sure. it because it's the thought that you went out of your way 
and did something you didn't have to do, which tells me I mean a lot to you. That's the message. So Tom, what I'm hearing you say. say acts, that's what I mean. If it's, honey, I know you're busy and you're late. You just told me you got 18 patients finishing up. Okay, yeah, uh -huh. I, need to get, I can get my dress at the cleaner. Oh, don't worry, I'll go down and pick it up for you. Mm -hmm. I'll go get it before the cleaner starts. Not, well, I guess you'll have to get it tomorrow, you know. <laughs> it, it, right. <laughs> it's looking out for them. And making an effort is what I'm hearing you say, is making a freaking effort. <laughs> Be so, it could be very basic. Come out there, guys. That's what you have to do. Okay, if you want to keep your lady, you got to make that effort, okay, to show her that she means a lot to you. And if you don't do that, she's going to find some guy that will do that for her. Absolutely. That's real talk. <laughs> so, so Tom, you, you know, you also have this, and, and, and I want to make sure that um, we can have that shared, is you have a favorite quote that describes a once in a lifetime relationship, a soulmate. And I would just love for you to share that uh, with us today. Okay, actually it's from somebody that uh, I'm sure everybody will know. So I'm certainly, I'm not taking credit for this. <laughs> uh, I ran across it, uh, Bob Marley. I'm sure we all recognize that name. Absolutely, we love some Bob Marley. I, didn't, I knew he was, uh, made great music. Uh, I certainly enjoy it. I a lot of, millions of people probably enjoy it. Absolutely. But I didn't know he was a philosopher. So this is a quote from him that I ran across, and I think it describes what Joan and I had. Mm. So, and it describes it in a different way and probably better than I can. So I, if you don't mind, I'll read it. For Absolutely, you. please. Only once in your life, I truly believe, you find someone who can completely turn your world around. You tell them things that you've never shared with another soul, and they absorb everything you say and actually want to hear more. You share hopes for the future, dreams that will never come true, goals that will, were never achieved, and the many disappointments life has thrown at you. When something wonderful happens, you can't wait to tell them about it, knowing they will share in your excitement. They are not embarrassed to cry with you when you are hurting or laugh with you when you make a fool of yourself. Never do they hurt your feelings or make you feel like you are not good enough, but rather they build you up and show you the things about yourself that make you special and even beautiful. There is never any pressure, jealousy, or competition, but only a quiet calmness when they are around. You can be yourself and not worry about what they think of you because they love you for who you are. The things that seem insignificant to most people, such as a note, a song, or a walk, become invalu invaluable treasures kept safe in your heart to cherish forever. Mm. Memories of your childhood come back and so clear and vivid, it's like being young again. Mm. Colors seem brighter and more brilliant. Laughter seems part of daily life where before it, it was infrequent or didn't exist at all. A phone call or two during the day helps to get you through a long day's work and always brings a smile to your face. In their presence, there is no need for continuous conversation, but you find you're quite content in just having them nearby. Things that never interested you before become fascinating because you know they are important to this person who is so special to you. You think of this person on every occasion and in everything you do. Simple things bring them to mind like a pale blue sky, a gentle wind, or even a storm cloud on the horizon. You open your heart knowing that there's a chance it may be broken one day, and in opening your heart, you experience a love and joy that you never dreamed possible. Mm. You find that being vulnerable is the only way to allow your heart to feel true pleasure that's so real it scares you. You find strength in knowing you have a true friend and possibly a soulmate who will remain loyal to the end. Life seems completely different, exciting, and worthwhile. Your only hope and security is in knowing that they are a part of your life. Mm. So One word comes to mind, and that is soulmate. And that was by Bob Marley. Yes. Beautiful. 
So I appreciate you sharing that, Tom. I'm uh, going to be looking that up tonight. Uh, I think that was beautiful to get a copy of that. Um, says it all and, 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 yeah. and exactly wraps it up beautifully. You know, I want to, while we have you, I think it's really important um, if I could take a quick shift here. Really would like to learn about, if you can tell us a little bit about the Florida Cancer Specialist Foundation and your work with the organization. Sure. Well, well. first of all, there, there's several things there I'm, I'm happy to talk about. Um, first of all, it's a great organization. Um, the foundation, I'm trying to open my PowerPoint here, sorry. Um, Florida Specialist Foundation itself is uh, an organization that's engaged in supporting uh, cancer patients and their families in Florida with essential non-medical living expenses. So this is any cancer patient in the state of Florida. What we do is we provide financial help for cancer patients and their families who are experiencing a uh, you know, financial difficulty because of the fact they have cancer, maybe they lost their job, uh, maybe they, did, they haven't been able to cover their medical bills. And we don't pay medical bills, but we pay mortgages, we pay rent, we pay car payments, we'll pay utilities, uh, that'll help them over a tough financial spot. That is our entire mission. Since our inception, um, the foundation has never turned away a qualified patient. And that, that again is anything. Now, Florida cancer specialists have, I think, upwards to just under 100 cancer treatment er uh, areas in Florida. That's not us. But the physicians of Florida cancer specialists fund 100% of the cost of our foundation. So in other words, all our operating costs are funded by the doctors, which means that every dollar we raise at the foundation, every dollar goes to cancer patients and their families. That's why I love this organization so much. Uh, Lynn Rays is the executive director uh, and her staff are just phenomenal in the work they were doing. And as you know, we uh, launched our uh, concert series with uh, the foundation back on February 1st in Sarasota. You're well, well aware of that. Um, and uh, we raised that night $357,000, which was a significant increase over the year before, which all this money goes to cancer patients. So I'm happy to uh, say that, uh, and I was very honored that they asked me to serve on the board of the foundation um, back in July, and I accepted. And uh, uh, I can't think of a, uh, another organization that uh, I would rather be affiliated with more than, than this organization and the work that they do to help. Since its inception, I think we, we made grants up to $8 million in financial assistance. And we'll continue to do it. And so our whole purpose is in raising funds to and then pass those funds right on through in the form of grants to qualified cancer patients and their families to help them out with their bills. I can't think of a, a more work. I did establish the Joan Elkid MD Memorial Fund with the foundation. And it is what we're talking about in the book. They can get the book there if they go to F uh, CSF, Florida Cancer Specialist Foundation, and they go on her memorial fund. It's right there. And then there's a match to if they want the copy of the book. It, by the way, they don't have to get, it doesn't get shipped to them. It's an ebook. They can download it right away on their device, the computer, as soon as they make the donation. We've got it set up that way. Um, so they're able to get the book. There's a, uh, I don't know, 300 and some pictures in the back of the book as well of the story of our story and our relationship together. There's a lot more in there than other, you know, we can't talk about in, in an hour. Uh, that people, people, I think, will get some great stuff out of that. But at any rate, all of this money that comes through the book sales now through Florida Cancer is going to go to help cancer patients, and I'm really happy about it. Um, we also have uh, a gala coming up, the annual gala from Tampa on October 8th, and we'll be posting up some information. It's on the website now, too, of the foundation website. We're doing a virtual concert with our band that we use in our concert series. Um, 
We've got some great auction stuff, a couple of cruises on the Sea Green Yacht, one in the Mediterranean, one in the uh, Caribbean. Uh, we got some great uh, music that evening for people. They can actually have a party, have a few people over. I mean, keep within guidelines, of course, but have a few people over and uh, put on the concert and uh, break out a can of beer or have your soda <laughs> or coffee or whatever you want to drink and, and have a good time uh, and listen to what the foundation's all about. And uh, uh, we always sort of certainly uh, want the most support that we possibly can get for these, uh, for these people. And this way is that, again, carrying on the legacy as much as I can and making a difference. And I appreciate you for making a difference. And I agree, this organization, phenomenal and the work that they're doing and had the honor to be, to be there that night when the money was raised and just some. Um, so um, I will be putting up the link so people can visit there. And if there's people that um, would benefit from this organization, please apply because um, yeah. I... I hundred uh, percent goes to the the care you know so we are um, downing our getting down to our last few minutes uh, Tom and and I want to um, get some of your final thoughts you know in the opening quote in your last chapter chapter 16 a time for new purpose what we do for ourselves dies with us what we do for another remains eternal so in the next, uh, just within like two minutes, can you share with us your final thoughts of what you want our listeners and our viewers to hear and to learn from all the way and, and the repurpose of the work that you're talking about and the work that you're sharing with us after um, Joan is no longer physically here with us on the earth, but her legacy still, still lives on. What do you want us to know? Well, uh, I would... Um... I'd like to say about the, the book thing that really started this whole process for me that inspired, she was the inspiration for me to do this. I don't do this for myself. I don't do it for aggrandizement. I don't do it for um, any of that recognition. I try to, as much as possible, stay in the background. The reason we're on talking tonight is because I think there's something to share that maybe somebody might get something from a little tidbit or here. Or there. Uh, and I, I do believe I spent 10 months writing the book, and I, the book is not all full of sad stuff. There's humor in it. There's, um, you can see kind of the life that we were doing and how we we're interacting. So I think it's great. And then now that we launched the ebook program, we're also doing it for other cancer nonprofits and, uh, and other nonprofits. By the way, Grief Heroes Foundation, we just set them up with the ebook program. So we do the same kind of thing. We'll put the ebook on their website and then if they have donations, we'll let them download the ebook and uh, those funds go to that organization. And we pay the cost of that for those nonprofits so they don't have the expense to do it. A Grief Heroes Foundation, uh, Grief Heroes, I think it's dot, dot org. Um, what they do is to provide kits to kids who lose their parents who maybe died of cancer in the school districts in Oklahoma, uh, the state of Oklahoma, uh, to help those kids uh, grapple with grief. So I see this expanding on the ebook program where we can do this for any nonprofit that would like it. All they have to do is come get on our website, fightforlife.com, and we'll be glad to set it up at our cost for them. Um, I think this whole issue of, um, for me, is this inspiration, and she's been gone now a little over five years, um, and to some extent, it gave me purpose in my life to go down this road when there didn't appear to be any more purpose. And um, making that difference would then keep her alive because otherwise people wouldn't know her. Now they ask me about her story. Now they ask me who she was. Now they know her a little bit. So it's my way of kind of keeping her alive. Um, and that's continued on after she passed. Um, yes. and, and I can kind of give you these, some quick stuff. I went and did a plaque in Blue Gardens for her. Absolutely. Um, got the, lobbied for an award from a mm -hmm. or a medical thing. Uh, we did some golf tournaments and raised money for ovarian cancer research. 
I launched her into Earth orbit on the Falcon X heavy launch that went up uh, June of 2019. She's 448 miles uh, yes, wow. in orbit around the Earth now. There's a special service that will do that. We talk about truly, um, as we close, uh, Tom, truly the things that you were sharing was really putting love into action and the word repurpose truly comes to mind. You know, we want to thank you for, for being with us today on Let's Talk About It with Janie Lacey. And everything that you shared reminds me of First, First Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Until next time, as you search deep down inside to turn your pain into purpose and maximize your time here on this earth, remember, as Tom has shared with us today, to pay it forward and spread love. This is your host, Janie Lacey. Thank you for tuning in. Let's Talk About It can be heard live every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Time and 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. Please join your host, Dr. Janie Lacey, for another edition of the show next week.